Okay. Hello. Can it see me? I'm alive. I don't know. Technical problems. Will it follow me? Yes, okay. Um, first time that I've ever tried doing a live broadcast, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, I'm just going to do a really quick demonstration today of how you can plan out what you would like to do with your cyan type. I make a lot of artist books, um, they're just really cute, there's lots of things you can do with them. So I think that it would be really nice if we made one together today. Gloves, if you want to wear gloves, I'm not going to put them on because you might be able to hear the fact that they're like really noisy. So I'm just going to pop them down the side. What you will need to begin is an idea, that helps. Some nice paper or fabric or card, whatever you're using, and you will need your cyanotype solutions. I keep them in this pot because it keeps them darker and, um, and obviously it protects other things as well in case there's some kind of leak. So I've got a few little different bits and bobs uh, to mess around with and later on since I totally forgot to get some water I'll probably have to do a dash, pause the recording and fill my receptacle. Okay, we are using chemistry, so shake it, shake it and you really don't need very much. Uh, this is bottle A, and the chemical name is potassium ferrocyanide. This mixture was just made up in the bottle, and it's approximately three weeks old. And I just really want a little tiny bit of each one. I hope you can hear us, and that I make sense. It's not often that I do. But hopefully in this moment, I am. Okay, part B, ferric ammonium citrate. I'm not a scientist and I'm very, very um, forgetful when it comes to scientific names. I basically know that the base element in this is the ferric part, which essentially is iron oxide. So I accidentally put a little bit too much of B in, so I'm going to add a little bit more of A. And then I'm just going to spill it on my paper willy-nilly. Okay. Doesn't really matter because um, it's that kind of short. I'm just going to scrape this down here. And what we will do, since I cocked up, surprise, is I will coat this entire side um, in cyanotype solution. I'll let that dry for a little tiny bit and then we will um, fold the paper, which was what I wanted to do first, for a time out, and set up the layout for our artist book. One of the things I really like about using cyanotype is the fact that you can really mess around with these painterly marks. You can have some nice um, brush marked edges if you so wish. I'm going to do mainly a full coverage but I'm still going to leave a little bit of texture on the end just because I like it. You can see how little of the solution I've actually put on. And what you want to do is to keep it moving so that you don't have those very visible 
edges or uh, these these areas of water tension where there's obviously just a little bit too much solution has stuck into it. So you only need a really tiny bit and you want to move it around a lot. It's going to dry nice and quickly because it's watercolour paper, so the paper is quite absorbent. But also, you should only be putting on a really thin layer. And the reason you only need to work extremely thinly is because we're working on a molecular level. It's not a pigment, it's a chemistry. So, you don't need to go too wild having layers and layers of the molecules all on top of each other. Because if you do that, you actually risk it washing out. So that'll do me. I'm not winning any prizes today for artistry, I think. I am just going to go straight for the fold. And this is going to be an eight page zine and you can do it with A4, A3, any kind of rectangular piece of paper. I'm just going to show you that because it's still wet, when I'm doing the fold you can see it's created new water tension spots. Um, so I'll probably just quickly run a dry brush over it once I've finished putting my layout in. So fold in half, fold in half again, like so, and then fold it in half again this way on. So I'm going to show you the state of the damp cyanotype when I open it up again. It'll still be those nice edges, but uh, you'll see almost like um, an ink blot. We've created loads of extra bizarre texture that, well, we don't need, we don't want. So with a dry brush, I'm just going to go over it. Try and uh, smooth it out a, bit, a little bit again. Now, if I hadn't chucked the cyanotype solution all over the page in the first instance, I would have done the folding part first. But as ever with anything that you're doing on spec or on the fly, you've got to go with the floor. <laughs> so that's going to be the interior of my book. And I'm going to just cut down the open bit. And then that gives me the layout of the pages for the book overall. I have a little piece of glass for putting my picture together later on. This is my exposure unit. It's super expensive. And I'm just going to turn my paper over on this side. My book is going to be a collection of uh, negatives, which I have printed off on my computer. Some extremely quickly put together black card and uh, tracing paper. So it's going to be kind of nonsense, but whatever. When the book comes together, that cyanotype will be on the inside and each of these pages will fold into, into the book. So when I am composing the image, I need to remember that it needs to face that direction and that direction. So this is the bottom of each page and that might be the top of the pages. Layout. Do anything you want with a sign type. So I'm going to go for one really nice long panel down here. I 
I'm going to go, since I've already got a splodge here, I think we'll go for um, a, another panel going across these two pages. Again, just keep smooth, smoothing it round. If you're using a watercolour paper, it's going to be textured, so you, you need to get in all the little nooks and crannies. Uh, again, take away bits if you're not, if you're not happy. Very forgiving, really. As you can see, I'm, I'm just uh, doing this work in daylight in the living room. Um, I, there's no direct sunshine on us right now, so it's um, it doesn't really matter. The cyanotype solution will expose a little bit, but not enough to to impact the overall exposure. So I make uh, loads of these little books and quite often if they've gone wrong and I don't like them, I just paint over them and do them again. So for this little bit at the end, I'm going to do um, one circle on this side and then one full block and I'll do, actually, I'll do one little bit here and a circle. Okay, and a full block. Okay, I've still got loads of solutions left. I could probably do another uh, three or four pages with what is left. So you can see, you really, less, less is more when you're working with this stuff. If you're going to use negatives, like I've got a couple of negatives, you don't want this to be too wet because obviously it'll stick to the negatives that you're choosing to use. So our opposite side is probably nearly dry. Let's get a couple of more pinky bits in there. Right. So that's the outline of the book itself when it folds back. It's got different layouts. I'm going to first work into this side as a poster. And then when you open up your book, you will have a poster of South Shields Customs House. Something, something like that, or customs office, and I think that will go nicely down on one side. There will be a cut in the middle, but it's part of how it's going to look. Um, I like texture, I'm a fine artist, really not a photographer, um, although I do work with photography as well a lot. But my joy comes from just prattling about with materials all the time. Right, I can sit for days just faffing about with bits of paper. This isn't going to win us any design awards. You can obviously uh, take more time and you can think about uh, what you're doing. Tracing paper has that beautiful thing where you can layer it up and create a couple of different um, depths. You can also use the negative space. I'm not going to bother with that at the moment, but um, just for future reference, you can. Cyanotype has that lovely quality where it can be extremely uh, graphic, like graphic design. It can be extremely fine art, or it can still be... Uh, photography. It's at that lovely crossroads between all of, all of those different things. So I've just made a few clouds. This is kind of one of, this is going to be obviously quite illustrative. I think we'll probably need a couple of seagulls. Um, 
and then and then possibly just a, a couple of shapes to fill in the space down here. The seagulls obviously are going to be your classic V in the sky. I live on the coast so the seagulls play a very big part in daily life. They're quite often we say asbo seagulls, you know, they're always causing trouble, antisocial behaviour. Okay, I'm not gonna over egg it too much because I just realised I didn't bring my lamp, so I'm gonna pause, see what the heck's going on, if anybody's even interested, and then um, I'm gonna grab my lamp, grab some water, and I'll rendezvous back in about five minutes, okay?